This is the Doe Spectrum Black 27 inch OLED monitor and it's one of the most unique displays out there. It packs a 1440p W OLED panel with a 240Hz variable refresh rate, anti-reflective Corning Gorilla Glass, a 0.03 millisecond response time, and has a ton of gaming and productivity features. For the past week I've been using it for gaming on both of my consoles and my PC, and for things like consuming media and productivity on my Mac. And today I'm going to get into what that experience has been like, what you can expect in terms of picture and build quality and all the details surrounding it. And we have to dig into a bit of the history behind this monitor because there are some things that you should be aware of. So if you're in the market for a new gaming or OLED monitor, you're going to want to stick around for this one. But that said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Doe is a relatively new company that you may have not heard of before, and if you have heard of them, chances are it hasn't been very positive. They had a number of issues early on with pre-orders and delayed development of most of their products, which made quite a few people angry, and justifiably so. I know I definitely would not have been happy if my order got repeatedly delayed, but they seem to be working out the kinks and slowly trying to rebuild their reputation. That's why they've decided to go the route of offering their products through retailers like Best Buy, Amazon, and B&H, as opposed to just on their own site. So it's good to hear that they're actively trying to take steps to get better, but it's definitely something that all of you should know about before we get started. Also, full disclosure, Doe did ship this monitor out to me free of charge, but no money has changed hands. Nothing is expected or required of me in terms of the content of this video, and these are all my own thoughts and opinions. Uh, having said that, I have been looking around for an OLED monitor for the PC build that I've been putting together. And there have been a number of 240Hz OLED monitors released already this year, but this Doe Spectrum Black is a bit different from anything that I've seen so far, especially when it comes to the design. This is one of the few models that I classify as a gaming monitor that doesn't have an overly aggressive look to it or a big bulky stand and flashy RGB lights, but it's rather sleek looking and quite minimal, which I much prefer. The panel is thin and has very small bezels, and the build quality is outstanding. On a lot of monitors, even high-end ones, you'll see some looseness or uneven gaps between the panel and the housing, but this is all very solid, and the plastic feels sturdy and made of high-quality materials. Part of what allows this to be so thin is likely the power brick being external on this model. It's still relatively small, but if you're worried about cable management, you're likely going to have to find a place to hide that away in a tray or something, but the nice thing is that having that power supply separate does eliminate some risk of buzzing or noise that you're going to get inside the monitor itself. On the back near the bottom, you've got a power button, a KVM button for quick switching between computers, and a 5-axis joystick for navigating through all the system menus. Just above that is the Spectrum stand that's attached that's made from cast aluminum alloy which has a premium feel to it. Uh, this particular stand is sold separately from the monitor and it'll cost you an extra $99 USD which I do think is somewhat unfortunate. It's not very often that you see monitors sold without a stand but if you've already got a monitor arm, this is fully VESA compatible, so you do have some options there. That being said, the metal on the stand does have a decent finish and give it a nice weight. It's quite sturdy and it has a grippy material on the bottom so it doesn't slide around on you in the same way that some monitors like the Apple Studio display do. And you'll also get height, tilt, and pivot adjustments. It's honestly one of the nicest built stands that I've seen, especially if you're comparing it to other gaming monitors. And just in general, this is one of the best displays that I've seen just in terms of overall build quality. What I haven't seen before, and I don't know that you're going to find on anything else, is the front glass on this display. This is Corning Gorilla Glass 3 with the XC anti-reflective treatment that Doe says will reduce reflections by up to 70% over other glossy coatings, and I have found it to be noticeably better versus some other glossy panels that I have here. I do prefer a gloss finish for OLED displays as I just find it results in a better overall picture. On a lot of matte finishes you'll get softer edges and things just don't look as vibrant, but outside of that, when it comes to the picture itself, the Spectrum Black is impressive. Like I said, this has a third generation W OLED panel and not a quantum dot OLED screen like we're seeing in a lot of these new OLED monitors that have been recently released. And that comes with some advantages and disadvantages. QD OLED displays are generally a tad brighter and produce more vibrant colors because of the way that the light source combines with the quantum dot layer, but because of the way that that quantum dot layer is activated by external light sources, 
In brighter areas, you'll notice that the blacks will actually be more of a gray than black, which doesn't happen on a W OLED. I also find that with some QD OLED displays, the colors can be a little bit too saturated by default, so you may want to tweak them a little bit more, but those are pretty minor things. The peak brightness on this screen is 1000 nits in HDR, 450 nits in SDR, with 150 nits typical brightness, which is pretty average for a monitor these days. In my space, it gets more than bright enough, and I have no problem seeing it in brighter areas either. It's also True Black 400 certified, so even with lower brightness levels, you're going to get more contrast, so it is a little easier to see. And that 240Hz variable refresh rate looks great while gaming. On my PC, I've tried a number of games like Starfield, Halo, Madden, and Forza, amongst others, all of which look amazing and are buttery smooth running from an RTX 4070. I find that the colors are accurate and not overly saturated in game, which I don't always find is the case on my QD OLED TV. And there's no screen tearing or motion blur with this being both AMD FreeSync Premium Pro and Nvidia G-Sync certified and everything is incredibly responsive with that 0.03 millisecond response time. To take advantage of the 240Hz refresh rate while gaming, you do have to have this hooked up to a PC, as both the Xbox Series X and PS5 only support up to 120Hz, but both those systems have no issue with display output and are equally as good. I know sometimes higher refresh rate displays can have problems showing up outside of 60Hz in consoles, but absolutely no issues there. And for anything 120 FPS or lower, you can enable black frame insertion to reduce eye tracking, motion blur, and increase the clarity of objects that move quickly across the screen. What I love is I can have all these machines hooked up at once as the Spectrum Black has two HDMI 2.1 inputs, one display port, 1.4 port, two USB-C ports that have 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds, one of which is for data only, but the other supports DisplayPort 1.4 and has 100 watts power delivery. So let's say that I want to hook up my MacBook or any laptop that charges via USB-C. I could just use the monitor and I don't have to worry about running any more cables or plugging anything else in, which is a bonus. And all the inputs combined with all the other ports on here is something that truly sets this apart from its competitors. On a lot of monitors, you might find a couple of USB-A ports with USB 2 or 3.0 speeds, but on here you've got two USB-C and two USB-A, both with 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds, which could potentially be useful, say if you've got wired accessories you want to use on multiple machines. That way you don't have to plug and unplug things from one machine to another, and with that 10 gigabit transfer rate, the things like external SSDs will run pretty quick as well, but just remember that you'll have to use one of the upstream USB-C ports to use the hub functionality. I think that lends itself really well to productivity, but I'm not sure that I'd want to use this as my full-time display for office work. I do prefer higher density displays, and with this being 1440p, you can clearly see pixelated text and images, more so on macOS versus Windows, but it's great for working with media. The Spectrum Black is individually calibrated from the factory and covers 98.5% of the DCI-P3 color gamut with a Delta E value less than 1, which is fantastic. I edited my last video on this display, and it's a dream for getting a clean, accurate preview of what your content is going to look like. And it's also great for photo editing as well. Again, with graphic design, you're probably going to notice individual pixels more if that's something that bothers you, but otherwise smooth motion while scrolling and moving through and around windows is outstanding. Watching TV, movies, and other media is equally impressive. This is HDR10 certified, so as of right now, there isn't Dolby Vision or HDR10+. I specifically asked Doe if they had plans to support Dolby Vision in the future, and I was told that it can introduce a lot of bugs and make things unstable on monitors, but it's something that they're constantly watching and might include in future products. I don't know the ins and outs of Dolby Vision enough to verify that, but if you do have Dolby Vision on your monitor, please leave a comment down below and let me know how that's been for you. Regardless, the Spectrum Black still has an awesome picture. The dark scenes are easily viewable, and those deep blacks and exceptional contrast make things really pop. I'd say that and gaming are where this really shines, and honestly, that's where I've been most impressed with this monitor. There are some other features left over that I think are worth mentioning that you can enable through the menus. 
There's a black equalizer to help spot enemies in dark areas while gaming, a crosshair overlay, and a customizable frame counter overlay. Now, if picture is something that you're worried about long term, given the fact that this is an OLED panel and there is inherently a burn-in risk there, this will come with a two-year burn-in warranty and a three-year limited warranty. As for what's included in the box, like I said, this doesn't ship with the stand, so you're gonna get the monitor, power adapter, and cable, and some paperwork but unfortunately no other cables, which I think is a bit of a disappointment. With any other monitors that I've bought in the last couple of years, they've always come with included cables in the box, and I think if you're gonna spend somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 on a display, that's something that should probably be included, especially these days where not all cable versions are created equal. This particular version is gonna run for 1099 USD with a Gorilla Glass gloss finish, or you can get a low haze anti-glare matte coating for 899, which is in the same ballpark as similar models from other brands. And I was told this should be available on Amazon, I think on March 13th and Best Buy on the 18th. And you should already see this listed on B&H. When it comes down to it, if I'm just looking at this strictly for my own personal use, I've been extremely impressed with the quality and the features on this display. The build quality is outstanding. I haven't had any issues with the picture cutting out or lack of display support in any platform or system that I've tried. And most importantly, it looks amazing. The high refresh rate makes gaming super smooth. It's great for watching videos. And this will probably be what I end up using for the time being as I build out my gaming setup. I think the biggest leap for most folks here is going to be getting over this brand's past issues. Some people are likely going to be more accepting than others, and it's going to take a sustained effort on those ends to repair their image alongside building great products. And given this is a pretty big hurdle for most folks, I would love to know, would you ever consider buying one of these monitors over others if the product was better, or are you willing to make some sacrifices for a brand that's historically been a safer bet? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or conduct an online seminar in the art of underwater basket weaving with smartphones, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.